Uh, I see an immigrant. I see somebody who immigrated when he was five years old to the U.S., somebody that, you know, left his home country to chase the American dream. I was fortunate enough to come from a family, you know, my parents, they grew up poor, but, um, you know, they worked pretty hard in Mexico to have whatever they could. My mom, you know, grew up poor. She grew up making tortillas every day after school to help her dad, you know, make money. Um, and now she had her own house. She was an at-home mom. My dad, despite coming from a poor family, he, he became, um, he was one of the people that would sell prescription drugs to doctors. He would go around parts of the country and, you know, prescribe the drugs and sell them. And then he said, you know, Mexico's been a good country to me in a lot of ways, but he knows that, you know, corruption's quite common in there. Like, the drugs, sometimes it can become a problem. So he, like, he saved money, he paid for the paperwork, for the registration fees, and I crossed the border as a legal immigrant. Um, the problem is that because the immigration system is so flawed, it's so antiquated and old, even while you're processing paperwork for a change of status, your other paperwork might expire. So you're in this gray zone of like, you're not legal, but you're also not illegal. So that was my situation for 15 years. And I'm applying for colleges and you know, I get acceptances and at that point, I realized, hey, you're not, you don't have a social security number, you don't have, you're not a citizen, you're not even a permanent resident. And I was like, I didn't sacrifice 12 years of my life to say, for someone to tell me, no, you're not gonna go because of a stupid number. So I research, uh, CalDREAMAC, DACA, um, AB 540. So CalDREAMAC is a state law that allows, you know, people to go to college just like regardless of their immigration status. And then DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, it's at a national level that it's a way for people that came when they were young for them to like not be deported and to have like a work permit and make their lives here in the USA. And I fulfilled all requirements. I applied for the paperwork and I got accepted. And you know, that's how I was able to apply for college and SIR and you know, now pretty much be here. So uh, when Trump got elected, I had never cried. I had never cried for an election. And that night I was bawling. Because, you know, as, as a Latino, as an immigrant, as a gay guy, <clears throat> it was just like a very tough blow. And it was sadder because, um, you know, my parents left everything they had in Mexico. They left, sorry, they left a country they had known. They left um, their education, they left their families, their friends, to give their children a better opportunity in life. Um, and then DACA. You know, these people come, I came here when I was five. You're gonna tell me that I committed a crime when I was five? You're gonna tell me that somebody who was carried here when they were a year or six months old is a crime? These are people that, America's their home, the U.S. is their home. They speak better English than Spanish. Right now we have 800,000 DACA recipients. Most of them are going to school, whether it's high school or college. A lot of them are getting jobs. They contribute to the economy, they pay taxes. You know, my parents left Mexico for a reason, and it feels that the problems are chasing us into here now. My mom went from owning a house to living in a trailer park, you know, to sometimes she would cry herself to sleep because she was just so sad that, you know, she didn't have the house that she had. Um, I decided, sorry. I decided you have to work hard to make their sacrifices worth. And also to give them back a little piece of what they gave you throughout the years. You know, when people see me, I want them to see, sure, you can see the gay Latino. I don't give a f Honestly, yeah, you can see that. But, you know, I want them to see an American. <laughs> Do something, protest, vote, call. If you can't give support to people, like emotional support to people that need it, if you can't educate yourself, most importantly.